I would like to, uh, to say Minglava to all the participants <coughs> of this meeting. ပထမဦးဆုံးနေတဲ့ကျွန်တော်ပြောလို့တာတော့ကျွန်တော်တို့အစွာသကဲ့ပြင်ပြောင်းလေးလုံခန်းနေအကောင်းထဲဖော်န
because Asian society will be uh, the, the helping us to improve our capacity, uh, uh, the, we are very grateful to them. Democracy Tongare, Luke for Sidiku, Tisan Nimoto, Giovanni, Yamananga, America, Pironzo Kedu, Missy Gomiagule, Luapare, Yama Bidumiana, America, Bidumiaja. In trying to establish a democratic society in Myanmar, we definitely need a friend like, uh, like the United States uh, in order to uh, promote mutual understanding and friendly relations between the United States and Myanmar. Uh, I hope that Asia society will give us all the necessary help. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, just a reminder, please no flash photography. Again, no flash photography. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Great. Uh, thank you so much for being here, and thank you for your patience, too. I know we started a, lot, uh, a little bit late, um, and we appreciate that. Uh, we're going to be joined by uh, several of uh, the ministers uh, that came as part of the president's delegation. So if I could ask you all to introduce yourself. Uso the Minister for President Office, take care of the Investment Commission. And so Lieutenant General Tainty, I, I take care of the Minister for Borders Affairs. I'm the Union Minister for the Immigration and Population. Thank you. Dr. Wemye, Deputy Minister for Health. Thank you and, and welcome all. Um, well, we put out a call for questions uh, via our website, Twitter, Facebook, and we received a very uh, good re response. So some of my questions will draw from that, but I'd like to start with a few of my own first. First, Mr. President, welcome to the Asia Society. It's a great honor to have you here. When we look around the world, uh, especially in recent history, there are very few examples of governments, military governments, that have relinquished power without violence or bloodshed. Yet it seems that you have done, uh, embarked on a relatively smooth transition in Myanmar. Can you tell us the impetus behind this dramatic change? ဒီကိစ္စတဲ့ပတ်သက်ပြီးတော့လို့ဒါကျွန်တော်နေနဲ့နမူနာပြောရမယ်ဆိုလို့ရှိရင်ကာရစီကိုကျွန်တော်တို
in order to establish a democratic system, we need to build a good foundation. We have to build a good economy. We have to build good infrastructure. We have to try to improve uh, human capacity. ကျွန်တော်တို့ဒီမိုကရေးစီကိုပြောင်းမိုးအတွက်ကျွန်တော်တို့ဒါလမ်းစင်ခွန်နေရာနောက်ကျွန်တော်တို့ <coughs> Uh, in order to, to, uh, to undertake democratic reforms, uh, we, we had to adopt a seven-step roadmap, which we introduced in uh, 2003. Uh, the, back then, we didn't have a constitution. We had to hold a very inclusive national convention uh, in order to draft a new constitution. constitution <laughs> Uh, we held the national convention in order to adopt the basic principles for the new constitution. We did so in consultation with um, members of the various ethnic groups. Uh, after we adopted uh, the basic principles for the new constitution at the national convention, legal experts and scholars uh, uh, drafted a new constitution. And then, and then we, we held that uh, referendum for the new constitution. The new constitution, ထောက်ခံမှုကျွန်တော်တို့ဒါရရှိပြီးတဲ့နောက်မှာတော့နောက်ဆက်ဆင်းကကျွန်တော်တို့ဒီရွေးကောက်ပွဲကျွန်တော
ဒီတရားဝရစုံမောနောက်ဒါတွေကိုကျွန်တော်လုပ်ရပါတယ်။ဒီတရားချက်ကတော့ကျွန်တော်စီဝိုင်းဖွင့်ဖြူးတိုး
ကျွန်တော်တို့မှာပါတယ်ကျွန်တော်တို့ဒီကျွန်တော်တို့ရဲ့အစိုးဝါလက်ထဲကျွန်တော်တို့ဒီငါးနှင့်စီဘာရေး
uh, to get developed countries to relax restrictions on our economy. Uh, the many foreign countries, have, uh, Western countries, have relaxed the restrictions on our economy. And then with that, uh, I believe that there will be many foreign direct investment uh, in our country. And then the, the increased foreign direct investment should allow our citizens uh, like, uh, to, uh, to improve their living standard as, and as well as their income. Uh, and on uh, foreign direct investment, and perhaps Uso Thane, you might want to answer this question. Obviously, that will be uh, crucial to uh, your government's ambitious plans for economic growth. Um, so can you provide an update on the status of the uh, new investment law? Uh, it's been delayed recently, we know that. Uh, when do you expect it to be implemented and what will it encompass? And at the same time, uh, how will you promote responsible investment that is both human rights friendly, also environmentally sustainable, and democracy friendly? So FDI law is very popular in the Western country and Europe and the, even in Japan and Korea. So at that moment, we have FDI law, existing law. It is 1989, around about that. We implement according to that law. It is uh, what my point of view it is okay. Uh, then another two things we supplement the another uh, what we need at that time in the FDI law. But now the investor is doing existing law. And now uh, then we made the another uh, FDI law. It is more appropriate for that uh, for Myanmar and regional. So we discuss a lot of things with the parliament and government. Now parliament is already approved, but there's a, some flaw for the investor. So that's why our government side made some sort of amendment, made some amendment and sent to the parliament again. But very soon it will be maybe October, the parliament or November. But no problem, we are now doing the existing FTI law. Existing FTI law is, so, not the best, but one of the best. Now uh, we are doing the, for the land lease, land lease problem by the uh, president orders by land lease. That is the, you can lease land from the government or from the people or local partner. So that is the difference. So no problem with FTI law. Another for the F FTI. President gave the FTI policy that is very responsible and environmental protection and social and CSR. So that is the FTI policy. So we have also the criteria for the FTI. That is also the responsible, invest, res, responsible investment in Myanmar that is unpopular in, you know, corporate social responsibility is the one priority. So concern to the mining and oil and gas sector, we are doing uh, another thing like internationally accepted that that is the EITI process. We just, you know, as a candidate of the EITI. So maybe step by step, we are doing very transparent for the revenue for every uh, every people and other third party and doing like that. That is what we are doing now. Thank you very much. Um, my next set of questions, uh, actually we received a number of questions via Twitter and email regarding ethnic conflict in Myanmar. And this question can be answered by you, Mr. President, or any of the ministers. Uh, your government has now reached ceasefire agreements with 10 ethnic groups uh, please tell us about that process. Uh, also, we had a number of questions related to ongoing conflict in Kachin State. So any uh, update or status report you can give us on talks with the Kachin Armed Group KIA 
would be appreciated. And finally, um, how do you see, uh, how do you envision a uh, comprehensive process of national reconciliation moving forward? ကျွန်တော်ညိုင်ညိုင်ကိစ္စနံပါတ်တာပြီးတော့အဲ့တော့ကျွန်တော်တို့တိုင်းပြည်ရဲ့ရှိနေကြောင့်ကျွန်တော
the Dalit Parliament is made out of uh, representatives of all ethnic groups. So uh, the, I, I think that uh, a very inclusive national conference should be held in the Parliament. But the, 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 as you all know, uh, the, uh, uh, the situation in the north uh, is not very stable. The fighting with the Kitchen uh, and Independence Army is still going on. Uh, uh, the, the problem is that there are some differences that are still uh, need to be sorted out. But uh, from the government side, we have ordered our troops uh, to stop fighting against Kitchen troops. But the, 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 our Kitchen colleagues have not reciprocated in a similar way. So we'll have to find a way to reconcile our differences. Once that happened, we should be able to reach a ceasefire agreement. And then the, the, I hope that it will soon happen. And then uh, uh, the, in the future, the, the, uh, uh, for the inclusive national reconciliation process, that we still have a lot of things to do. Uh, we'll have to work on the rehabilitation of uh, the people who will be coming back uh, to their native villages uh, after, uh, after the peace process. And then we'll have to create jobs, we'll have to provide them with food and shelter, and then we'll also have to make sure that the children of these people have access to education and healthcare systems. Thank you very much. This morning in, the, in your address to the United Nations General Assembly, you said, the people inhabiting our country, regardless of race, religion, and gender, have the right to live in peace and security. Uh, we received a number of questions related to the violence in Rakhine State and the plight of the Rohingya. Uh, you have appointed a national level independent investigation committee to look into this situation. When do you expect the commission to submit its findings and recommendations? And when, once that's done, what will be the next steps? Please allow me to answer these questions. So in fact, the things happened at the Rakhine State was the communal's violence between the two groups, just the communal's violence. So each side committed each other's. So then uh, the affected peoples are from the both sides. So the root cause of this Communal, communal violence is based on the mistrust and the misconduct between the peoples. So then the, we have to solve the reconciliation process and also the social harmony of these two uh, communities. So now our, we are conducting the investigations commissions composed of the free and public members from all the walks of lives. So there do have uh, several people from the each religious members, Buddhist, Muslim, Hindu, and also Christianities. And also many peoples uh, who are in a very free and very uh, individuals. So because we want to uh, discover the main root of and the causes of the problems. So uh, recently, we also make the, conduct the international workshops on the September 22nd and 23rd. It composed of several scholars, several experts, and several peoples who do have the rich experience in crisis management. So then uh, from those workshops, we also discovered several recommendations. And now we are going uh, to build a roadmap. So, but uh, we still need a certain time uh, to make further workshops and further investigations. So, but our goal is to forward the reconciliations and to be the harmonic societies. And in the meantime, 
one of the root causes of this problem is undevelopment problem. As you know, this Rakhine state is, uh, the connectivities of the Rakhine state is still very poor. The infrastructures are not yet developed. Uh, the, the peoples are facing the scarcities of jobs, opportunities, and uh, we do need to develop the infrastructures development and also the human resources development in those uh, areas for the both communities. So, and some, uh, we need to change the culture of the people because the societies is very constrictive at this moment. So those are the challenges we are facing now and we may systematic, systematically uh, establish the process of relief, rehabilitations, the rules of laws, reconciliations and social harmony and the sustainable development of this state. And we sincerely believe and we have the full believing that we can solve this problem in a certain time. But the times may be a decades. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Also in your address this morning at the UN General Assembly, you extended congratulations to Da Aung San Suu Kyi for the honors she has received during her visit to the United States in recognition of her efforts in support of democracy. And my understanding is that you both met in New York City uh, just on Tuesday. Throughout her visit, she has spoken positively about your leadership and the sincerity of your commitment to reform and she endorsed further easing of sanctions. So it seems your working relationship is evolving. Uh, how do you view her role in Myanmar today? Of course, she's a member of parliament, uh, but can you describe what your working relationship is like and what do you envision in the future for her? ตาบิโรจนรุณาโดนซ้อนสุจีอ่ะจนรุณูญมานายเนี่ยคนละละพี่เป็นเปียงเลยลงงานนี่มาอคันกันน่ะตียักกันนี่บิโรป่าวเว
uh, how to reform it and how to ensure that it um, serves the people of Myanmar. So I'd really like to hear your thoughts on uh, what is being done to address these. Thanks. I would like to respond regarding on the health sector reform. Our vision of the health sector reform in my country is uh, to raise health status of our community through the increased coverage of our healthcare services for the whole country, as well as to increase to upgrading the quality of healthcare services in the Myanmar. This is our main visions and aims and objectives. So previously we have made the plan for the whole country is a centralized plan. Now we are now focusing on the bottom up planning for the region wise, state wise plan. So now we are contacting the series of workshop in state and uh, regional and state for the contacting of the plan process. In this plan, we are focusing on the rural development because, as you all know, 70% of our population is residing in the rural area. So, rural health development is a very essential issue for our health sector reform. So, based on that health, uh, rural health development, we are focusing on the number one is uh, infrastructure development, infrastru infrastructure reform. That means organizational reform as well as supplies and equipments of our facilities reform. And second thing is uh, our human resources reform. Because previously we are focusing on the general uh, medical care services for our community. Now we are focusing on the specialty health care services for our community. It's a very important issue. So now we are the human resources reform as well as technical reform for our health system reform. So these are things we consider for the whole country reform process for our health sector. Thanks a lot. My next question uh, actually comes via our website. Uh, someone observed that there's been a lot of brain drain in Myanmar during the past years. Uh, what are your thoughts on encouraging people who are educated um, abroad and have exposure working outside of Myanmar to return home to participate in the building of the new vision you have set for the country? Uh, could you please share with us any views or strategies to attract uh, these people to come back to the motherland. Channel, <coughs> ဒီဆရာဝင်တွေအင်ဂျင်နီယာတွေနောက်ကစီးပွားရေးလုပ်ငန်းရှင်တွေတော်မြန်းများကျွန်တော်နိုင်ငံပြင်ပါဟိုထ
our overseas Myanmar to come back and, uh, and uh, contribute to the reconstruction process in the country. And uh, we, we know that, uh, that there are some problems. Our citizenship law doesn't allow dual citizenship. But in order to help uh, uh, the overseas Burmese uh, to come back home, we are trying to find a way uh, to overcome some of the legal barriers. The Minister of Immigration and Population will supplement to my answer. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much for this question. Uh, first of all, as my president said, according to the uh, existing law, 1982 Myanmar citizenship law, the U.S. citizens are not allowed, are not allowed in my country. There is a reason why uh, someone who are living in foreign country, they want to uh, uh, come back to Myanmar. So we are uh, trying to launch the new system. The name of the new system is PR, Permanent Resident System. By using this uh, system, there's someone who who like to come back to Myanmar. They don't need to uh, revoke or surrender their citizenship. Thank you. I've been told I have time for one more question. So this question is to you, Mr. President. Uh, you have said that you plan to serve for only one term. Is this still the case? Uh, and at the end of your tenure, what would you like your key accomplishments to be? ตะดาเพนอจนเอาสานาจนเอาเป็นกูสานายาတော့ซอซอว่าပြောတယ်ဘာပဲကျွန်တော်ဒီဝန်တာမဲ့လုပ်ဖို့ဆိုပြီးတ